Welcome to Front and Center with Jackie Jordan. Hi, Jackie Jordan. It's Jennifer Love Hewitt. Here's to all the people making an impact. Lots of love. This is Front and Center with your host, Jackie Jordan. Entertainment and pop culture expert Jackie Jordan is with us. Two-time Emmy-nominated Hollywood producer Jackie Jordan. We are the show where we talk with the change agents, the storytellers, and the activators from behind the scenes, making impact. And joining me is co-host Phil Barb. With show producer Stephanie Cobian. Everyone has a friend or has a product that needs to go on Shark Tank. Well, yeah, you say yes to everything until you hit a certain level. Welcome to Front and Center. I'm Jackie Jordan. This is the show where we meet the storytellers, change agents, and activators that are making impact. I'm joined with show producer Stephanie Cobian and reality television producer Philip Andrew. Thank you so much for being here. We are going to meet the behind the scenes storytellers, change agents, and activators that affect and impact collective narratives. And I prefer the word activators over activists. On this episode, we meet powerhouse producer, editor, casting director, Margot Romero, four-time Shark Tank Emmy-winning team member with a current team nomination for Outstanding Casting for a reality program for Mark Burnett Productions. And I will just say, my favorite Shark Tank product is the Squatty Potty which sold $1 million uh, dollars in 24 hours. I will just say that on the season six debut. We're going to find out some of those really great stories about that. So, Philip, Stephanie, do you have a favorite Shark Tank product? I, there were these shoes. They had, like, the first couple seasons, and they um, they could put, like, designs on the shoes, and, like, you get, like, they were kind of converse-looking, and it was in Venice. I don't think they got a deal, but I thought they were cool, and I was like, I need to check you guys out. I haven't yet, but. I love the show. Like, I just love what it has done for uh, entrepreneurs. And I think it's motivating, too. You just see other people out there doing it. You that's know, it, what I like as a business owner. Yeah, As totally. a business owner, I think that's what I like about it, too, is that you just see people really putting themselves out there. And we get so much. And, you know, the micro economy is the small businesses, the small business owners. So. so many. That's why there's been so many seasons. Well, we're going to hear her stories from behind the scenes uh, here on Front and Center. And what I was also looking for for this particular show or the actual show series, which was really important to me in establishing the voice for the show, was people making a difference in a huge way that aren't always recognized. And one of the projects that our upcoming guest, Margot Romero, is working on, uh, worked on and won an Emmy for, as well as the producer uh, editor, is the Empowerment Project, which is about extraordinary women doing extraordinary things. And even though this show series isn't going to be just about women, I love the concept of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And that's the whole idea behind being behind the scenes and now front and center. So, Phil, we've probably known each other for a long time now. Yes, it's been we're we're getting close to getting close to a decade now. And you're a behind the scenes person doing a lot right now, front and center. Trying, yeah. trying to do it. Yeah, no, and doing making a lot of things. Impact. And, and you know, and I think that there's such an like one of the great things is you know growing up, uh, you know, I don't think you always notice like you just see that you see content, you see TV shows, and you just assume like oh these are the people do, you and you have no idea. Like, I remember being a little kid and seeing, like, the movie credits roll. Be like, who are, who are all these people? And what are they doing? And, um, and then moving out, to, you know, moving out to California and being able to, like, dive into the industry, you see all of the, not just people doing a great job at their work, but then all of the passionate things that people have going outside of it. Um, and it really is, it's uh, being in the environment where you see other people chasing their dreams, and it's just so motivating to want to go out and create. And, uh, and once you start to you know, get certain skills and you learn certain things, it just, it all builds. And then all of a sudden you're just like, oh yeah, I'm, I just want to work all the time because I love it. And it's so much fun. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even feel like it's work. I feel like it's, it's just like creating. You're just living. Yeah. You're just creating. You're just living. Yeah. Stephanie and I have had the privilege of working together for a little over a decade. Yeah. Now. <laughs> A while, a while. It's I been mean. such a privilege. We've created a lot together. Yeah. And then you were an accidental bumpin'. 
Yeah, I, I'm originally from Metro Detroit, as you know, and I moved out and I was just that stereotypical kid. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to get a job in entertainment. I didn't I had never been west of Wisconsin before. And when I got to Los Angeles, I had that energy of like, if they can just see me, I don't know who they is, but if they could just see me and hear me and, and if I can just get a resume in their hand, maybe, maybe I can get a job somewhere. And so I would just go door to door at production companies. And hand out my resume, just trying to, you know, break into the industry. And uh, so I remember one day, you know, getting to one of those little placards at like a corporate office that has the listing of all the companies. And I'm looking and I just see uh, TV Gaspert. And I was like, well, I don't know what that is, but it has the letters T and V in it. So they must That's something be, I would have done. You know, That's so they, something I would have done They must for have sure. done something in entertainment. very clever with that. You know, and it's it's so amazing. And I think this is one of those moments where you look at and you're like, you know, you can never, you can only connect the, uh, or connect the dots looking backwards. And... You know, to, to now be, you know, have such a great relationship with you and to be, you know, to working together and knowing that it all stemmed from, hey, look, I see the letters T and V and I'm going to go find out what they do in there. Uh, do you and, remember the you day know, he and, bounced and in amazing. the office? It's he so literally amazing. bounced yeah. in the office. Yeah. And it's going to be perfect because that we. office was fun. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really fun office. It was, it was a, a fun good office. time. Thanks, we had some good times thanks. there. <laughs> and that's perfect because later on we have friend and a longtime colleague, Krista Parkinson. She's also one of those change agents that we're talking about here, making an impact, which she'll be on front and center. And I knew her from her super agent days with her big cape at William Morris. And, you know, she started a company which I think is revolutionary and significant to this particular particular conversation, which is my grads get jobs. And yeah. Well, I'm just curious if the, uh, you know, what you did 10, 11 years ago, going from door to door is something that would work now. I wonder if Krista, you know, but she's going to say that exactly. That. I mean, yeah. Is it the same? I mean, I don't know where Netflix door, knock, knock, knock. Anybody but you help? literally have that Hollywood story where yeah. I just showed up with my resume and said here. Well, a lot of people said no. <laughs> there were a lot of, I met a lot of security guards. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, our executive producer, Scott, of the of this show, he has that also same kind of energy. Like, let's just go to the door. And yeah. if the security guard says, no, it's move on. <laughs> Knock somewhere else. And I just wanted to also say that you wrote the foreword to our, our book, The Ultimate On-Camera Guidebook, hosts experts and influencers with my co-author, Shannon O'Dowd. And I really appreciate that so I, thank you so much well that. no and it was an, an absolute honor to be to be asked to write that and it was um it, it really did you know i'm gonna get all sentimental like it meant a lot to be asked to do that so thank you so much and um and uh to everyone that's watching go buy the book no i'm kidding <laughs> so, <laughs> no i'm not wow, kidding no wow. actually go buy the book yeah go buy the book so phil on this particular show you are going to be the one man there's going to be three women mm -hmm. and there's you know, um, we get pitched as uh, publishers all the time, different book concepts. And there's this gentleman named Ryan Merkel who wrote a book called The Quadrant. And he believes in that all the universe is built on three plus one. So now that I've been aware of this, and you can find him on Facebook because he puts his whole theory out there, I keep looking for the relevancy of three and one. And I keep finding the patterning, that numer numerical patterning of three and one. So today you would be the one. I won't won't necessarily say the t token white male at the is table, it, but I, I'm, the, I'm the plus one. I'm the plus one at this the, party. You got it. You got that right. So um, it made me think that um, I swim on this master swim team and um, with all these really fantastic swimmers. And I call myself a guppy and I'm in the guppy lane because I've never swam competitively. I do it because I li like to be outside. I like the water. It's great exercise. And so I'm in the slow lane and I'm fine with it. I've been doing it for nine years. I can keep up with all of them. They're, they're champions, they're competitors. And there's a lot of recreational swimmers like myself who are just doing it for like the exercise and I can do all the workouts. So it was brought to the um, team's attention that we were in the slow lane and that you know, why are we be called the slow lane? Well, it's because we have the slowest time of the four lanes. So somebody was really offended by that. And so now it's the fast lane, the mid fast lane, the middle lane, and the choice lane. Oh my God. <laughs> and I am now swimming in the choice lane. Choice so lane. all of our times on the, on the board when we get our time sets are the CL. We're all in the water with our little hats on. And we're like, why are we in the CL? Because we're the choice lane. You choose to be in our lane. So we're not just the <laughs> slow lane anymore. And, you know, I, it's kind of like some of it's a little over the top, isn't it? Trying to reconcile all these indifferences and But you and are the slow lane because you are slow. Exactly. I don't understand the... 
change exactly. what that is stemming from. Right? I mean, if you're slow, you're slow, you're slow. I am slow. I love it, but I'm slow. <laughs> I don't know if the fast lane people would be so happy if I joined their lane, but... <laughs> you know what? Hey. But in our choice lane... All are welcome. So there you go. There I you like go. that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's okay, Phil. I'm always, when it comes to TV guests, I'm always the token Mexican. Only half Mexican, whitest Mexican, but Mexican. <laughs> and my friend, literally, my best friend calls me, I'm the taco from Burger King. Oh my God. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my, I get to be token here and there too. So it's okay. The joke within the joke within the joke, which now are all just bad jokes. <laughs> We're all token in some way. Uh, of course. But We're anyway, Ryan Merkel will keep it the three in one theory. Three in one theory. I like that. Yeah. What, and what other what other places have you found the three in one? Um, I did some research because I thought it was really fascinating. It caught my attention as, you know, content does. And apparently it is a like an ancient historical algorithm of which like I guess even like the pyramid is three sides. Yeah. But it's it's a four. I, see, you know, I'm with you on that. I love all those. Oh, yeah, I love like, all those type of of the numerical stuff that it feels like it shouldn't make sense, and then it ends up, like the ends like the eighty sense. like the eighty twenty rule. Yeah, and how how prominent that becomes in so many different areas, um, and uh, in a lot of other things of the that are much who do more. All the yeah. work and eighty percent don't do the work exactly. And um, there's a there's a really cool theory also, and and I don't know enough about it to speak intelligently on it, but it's called the the rule or the law of really big numbers. Oh, it's and it's like when that. you, yeah, go look it up because I don't know enough. To, okay. I brought it up, but I don't know enough to actually talk about it. But it's you like, got it, it. it's actually, it talks about this crazy thing of how like we always use like, oh, getting hit by, struck by lightning as like, it's this really rare thing. And they actually say like, it's actually should happen a lot more. Like statistically, oh. it's actually amazing that it doesn't happen more oh. when you think of how much lightning and all these Happens. things. And, um, but yeah, law of really big numbers, 80, 20 rule. And we'll three, look for the three, three plus one. one yeah. We'll look for the three plus one. Always. You know, ninety nine cents. Well, I'll just it's give just you the a better deal. <laughs> I'll it's give you. The, deal. I'll give you the last three. Th- like three plus one. one that we ran. Th- we ran through uh, pre show, which was there's what you you intend to say, there's what you actually say, there's what you wish you said, and there's a result. Yeah, <laughs> that's the three plus one. You know, I'm an extrovert as as most of us are, but like so, I'm I'm with the things I'm saying. I'm thinking, you know, like I'm figuring it out as I'm saying it. <laughs> So I have, by the time that I've said it and I think I've already moved on. So, you know, that's why, that's why we have the other producers to, to protect us. Like, hey, that's uh, okay. you know, when I see somebody waving, waving their hands furiously, I know like, or that's cutting the, the chop of the, the neck. Exactly. The I know. No, hey, Phil, uh, maybe just have a sip of your coffee and stuff. There's talking. the cue. Yeah. I have issues. I speak too fast. Sometimes my words come out faster than my brain can even follow. Or I have to, like, at times people are like, can you slow down when I do, like, when I talk to our clients sometimes, they're just like, what did you say? I'm like, oh, my gosh, keep up. Like, you got to go, like, think faster with me. Keep up with what I'm saying. So not quite the same as you, but I I talk really fast. I have to really make myself go slow. I feed off of my own energy, which is just such a weird thing like i get i start getting amped up and then i get amped up and then all of a sudden i'm talking really fast i don't know what's going on no one can follow me up but i'm like but in my head i'm i'm a brilliant yeah. communicator yeah. there you go yeah, exactly in our next segment sequence we have producer margo romero from shark tank she shares what it's like and the magic that happens putting those businesses on the show everyone has a friend or has a product that needs to go on shark tank and and no one understands until they get there, what it takes to actually get on the show. In addition, she'll share her editing experience on The Empowerment Project, Extraordinary Women Doing Extraordinary Things, a theme for our show here, Front and Center. If you are doing extraordinary things from behind the scenes, from any walk of life, we'd love to hear from you at frontandcenteredpodcast.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube at TV Guestbert and or TV Guestbert Broadcast Podcast. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook at TV Guestbert. Still to come, front and center conversation with former William Morris agent Krista Parkinson, who is now the CEO of My Grads Get Jobs. One of the things that uh, is key when you're an agent is about relationship building and network building. Are you ready to take your seat front and center and need some behind the scenes media training? Sign up for our online course, Media Marketing. For more information, go to tvguestbert.com. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned, and Alex is no longer a prodigy. 
Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, fight his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Details Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. Welcome back to Front and Center with Jackie Jordan. This is what an astronaut looks like. This is what a brewmaster looks like. This is what a congresswoman looks like. This is what an architect looks like. This is what a pioneer looks like. This is what a documentary film crew looks like. There are so many inspirational women out there, but why is it sometimes so hard to see them? Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Jackie Jordan, and this is the show where we have the storytellers, change agents, and activators taking their seat with us from behind the scenes, Front and Center. I'm joined with show producer Stephanie Kobian and reality television producer Philip Andrew. And uh, we are the people behind the scenes in life and reality making impact, and we are now Front and Center with... A good friend, and I call you a change agent, mm. an activator, uh, powerhouse producer, editor, casting director, Margot Romero, four-time Shark Tank Emmy award-winning team member. Thank you for being uh, here with us thanks, today. Thanks, Jackie. Love having you here. You are also the Emmy award-winning editor for The Empowerment Project, yes. Extraordinary Women Doing Extraordinary Things. And what I really liked about it, it's the embodiment of what this show is all about for me. And not exclusive to women specifically. However, I love ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And that's what the behind the scenes project. But you call yourself an accidental producer. I do. How yeah. Can, tell us. Well, I, it was never my intention to, to work in television or film or radio or anything that had to do with media. I had planned to be a criminal attorney. I wanted to be a... Um, defense attorney for people who didn't have money, you know, public defender. Well, what I love about your credits is, especially specific to the entertainment industry, is you've done a lot of different um, roles. I have. So you've done, yeah. you know, producing and casting and film mm -hmm. production and mm -hmm. television. I also have an uh, art degree and I, d I did art directing and uh, production design for seven years. And then I moved into line producing and then moved into directing horror films, which was a whole, whole nother lifetime. I have so and, many uh, questions, <laughs> so many questions. Did that for about seven years. And, um, and but I've produced throughout, um, but I call myself an accidental producer because I, I never really, um, saw myself as a producer. I saw myself as a collaborator and I didn't really realize that that's what a producer really is. And so for the empowerment project, oh, such an amazing project to get to work on. And with some of your favorite stories, you know, here's the thing. Sarah Moshman, who directed the project, is an incredible documentary filmmaker. And uh, I just want to give her kudos right up front. They shot for 30 days and we spent six to nine months in editing and then another, you know, three months polishing the post. But um, I really got to work with her to hone what was important about the story. And we, you know, had 13 interviews with 13 extraordinary women, all in predominantly male uh, dominated fields. And it was about finding the gem for each woman, you know, like what's the heart and soul of each woman's story. You know, there, there was a mathematician that, that was interviewed from Claremont, um, college. And, and I just, I loved her because she had this joy for math that was, I'd never seen anyone with a joy for math. I failed math like so many times in college. It was, it almost cost me my degree, you know, but she had this joy for math because she looked at it as music. You know, and she compared it to music all of the time and how of the equations were were musical to her. And um, there was a there was a woman who uh, was an entrepreneur in um, in Harlem who has the longest running all female written and directed black musical in Harlem. And it is just powerful. She wrote it for herself as a young actress 20 some years ago, and now is um, directing it with her daughter starring in oh, it. Oh, very cool. You know, so it's just, it's th there were just so many incredible women. I, I, I... And it, I think what's really, what's really special about that for yourself, being able to help work with crafting that is being able to take this, this raw, the, these raw, uh, you know, the image, the footage, and being able to then with the audience in mind, how do we help them mm -hmm get connected to these right. people and being able to tell their story in the most effective way possible. You know, we joke so often, it's like, I would rather listen to someone talk passionately 
about something that I don't care at all right. about than to have somebody, you know, tell me more about, you know, some a topic I already know, but being bored. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and then, you know, for you to be able to go through all that footage. And I think a lot of times people forget how important post mm -hmm. is. Right. Like how much gets done in post in, in the crafting of the mm -hmm. story. And there's so much. There's well, so it's, much it's to like do. it's like what Jackie was saying about the um, what you want to say and what you say. Yeah. It's you know, there's the script that's written and then there's the script that's shot and then there's the script that's edited. And then the plus one is how it's perceived by the audience. I think, one, you know, three, so, right. tying it back in, which I think is so in which is why why, you know, I love documentary films. Right. and I love reality, mm -hmm. you know, in, mm -hmm. in from that standpoint of. You're you're going out and we're figuring out as it's right. happening. Yeah. You know, there and like that's the for me not being a, a movie writer or something, it was always fun for me to just be like in the moment, mm -hmm. figuring it out. Right. Um and uh and so yeah, what you've done is just it's really powerful to be able to take those stories and then bring them into a, a great storytelling way to make them, you know, easy to digest and empowering for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So Thank you well, for the work you guys. Thank have. you. And, you know, I think that part of it is like what I, I loved that um, that Stephanie was talking about being like the token Mexican in the room. Right. I was adopted, but my father's Mexican. And um, oh. and because of my last name, people are always saying, oh, did you marry a Mexican? I'm like, no, my dad's Mexican, you know, and I just own it like what came up for me was that you were being your authentic self by saying that and, and sort of joking about it, riffing about it. And I think that that was the thing with the empowerment project that was the most important to all of us, you know, was find the authentic true voice of each individual woman. You know, what is their authentic message? What is that gem that they have, you know, for the younger generation of women? I mean, and and for all of us, you know, really for anyone in the audience watching it, but especially for younger women to empower them to, you know, not be afraid to try something that they might think that they're going to look foolish doing. You know, it doesn't matter. It would you rather look foolish or would you rather be, you know, wrong? Well, isn't I that, isn't it. that yeah. the goal of life, really? I mean, yeah. you want everyone to be their best. You know, you want to live your most authentic life and you want everyone that you come in contact with to be their very best. You know, I love that about Jackie. I think that since I've known you, you draw the best out in people. And I think it's a gift. You know, it's something that's really beautiful and super special. Thank and you. and I'm honored to be here and be able if to I be a part of it with you. I you know? open for people to do that. You know, that but, but that is what you. it's about. You know, I mean, really, truly, if we have anything to do on the planet it's to be our authentic selves and to pull out of those people that we come in contact with their very best selves you know i love that you said that because what else is important really so margo we are going to reset and talk shark tank with you in a moment in our next segment sequence producer margo romero from shark tank shares what it's like and the magic that happens putting those businesses on the show there was a company that has auditioned for 10 years They've applied for 10 years. They have an idea. They have a prototype. They just finally got a patent after 10 years, but they have no sales. If you are doing extraordinary things from behind the scenes, from any walk of life, we'd love to hear from you at frontandcenteredpodcast.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube at TV Guestbert and or TV Guestbert Broadcast Podcast. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook at TV Guestbert. If you're ready to write that book you've been putting off, join us at GuestbertPublishing.com for a how-to step-by-step online course that shares your publishing options and paces you on how to structure your book. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, find his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Details Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. Welcome back to Front and Center with Jackie Jordan. 30,000 people can audition for a show in a season, and... 200 get on. I am Jackie Jordan and this is Front and Center and we are the storytellers, change agents and activators affecting collective narratives. And joining us on my right is Stephanie Cobian, show producer and Philip Andrew Barb, two-time Emmy nominated television producer. And taking her seat front and center is 
four-time Shark Tank Emmy-winning team member, Margot Romero. Margot, thank you so much for joining us. You have participated in making so much impact, and people don't recognize the faces and the souls and the hearts of the Mm -hmm. people behind the scenes that are doing this and bringing these stories forward. But we're here because we want to hear about Shark Tank. I know you were, you were chatting in between um, with our executive producer about one of his early inventions that he put out that he had to go through a whole law firm and an office. And now you go and audition for Shark Tank mm-hmm. and you are actually the gatekeeper for that. People don't realize what a process it is to get on the show. Everyone has an idea. Everyone has an invention. Everyone has a product that they either have thought of or want to do or have made in their garage. And they're like, "I, I, you know, I need to go on Shark Tank. Everyone has a friend or has a product that needs to go on Shark Tank. And and no one understands until they get there what it takes to actually get on the show. And... um, and, I, and it's an honor, you know, to be a part of that process because there's a huge team that is a part of that process, right? There's a lot of gatekeepers. 30,000 people can audition for a show in a season and 200 get on. We're to hone in on what's the best invention, what's the best entrepreneur who's camera ready, who, who's who has sales, who has story, you know, who can there's, tell a story. Who can tell it. There's so many more things than just, oh, I have a great idea. And it's got to be, it's got to be tough at times because you've got, you know, so many people that are incredibly passionate mm-hmm. about what they mm-hmm. have, even if they don't have much. Bill, you have a casting background, a strong casting background yourself. So you can yeah. relate to the process of, you know, rejecting people who are, you know, have their hearts and and maybe their you know future ideas online. Margo, has there been a company on Shark Tank that you wanted to see make the show but didn't make the show or that the sharks didn't invest in? You know, it's funny because when you just said that, it, it, a couple of things came to mind. And one is uh, there was a company that has auditioned for 10 years. They've applied for 10 years. They have an idea. They have a prototype. They just finally got a patent after 10 years, but they have no sales. And every year we've, we love these entrepreneurs, like the executive producers love them. Everyone in casting loves them. Everyone on my team, every time we edit something to send to the network, because one of the things that my team does is we put together sort of like mini capsules of what would it look like if we pitched them on the show? You know, how would we present it? How would we demo it? What would, how would they um, speak to the to the sharks kind of thing and send it to the a network and the network you know along with the executive producers decide what's going to make the best TV so we've we've constantly fought for this company because they're just the entrepreneurs are so amazing they're such great guys and their energy is like out of this world and they just really don't have anything and this year they're getting on oh excellent. and I will say like it, it makes me so happy because I've I have put their package together every single season. And every season I've said, I know you've seen them before. Please look at them again with fresh eyes. And this year they're getting on and they're amazing and they're going to be incredible TV. And I think the sort of thing that pushed them over the edge was that the, um, the casting director, when she met him, met them again at one of the open calls. They kept coming to open calls every year, 10 seasons, kept coming, kept coming back with the same little prototype, you know, and she watched the engagement that they had with everyone else in line. And everyone was so blown away by their energy and their enthusiasm that it didn't matter. You know, it didn't matter what they were, re- what they actually had. I want to know their energy. I want to know what they were doing for 10 years to bring in money while they weren't making money on their prototype. <laughs> like, I want to know a what... lot of other things. Yeah. yeah a lot of other things. Yeah. Has yeah. there, been a, has there mm-hmm. been a company or a product that made that you championed to get on that mm-hmm. didn't like, didn't like, a- or, absolutely. Like, you don't have to be a winner on the air either. No, 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 no. Schulte's Bakery is one of my little companies that I I was in Venice one day and I went to this little bakery and they she was making uh, bread pudding of all things. And I happened to love bread pudding and she made it in 150 different flavors. And I I said, you have you would you consider coming and auditioning for Shark Tank? And she was like, ah, you know, I'm not a camera person. And at the time she was like eight months pregnant and she ended up getting on the show and the sharks didn't get it. Like they just didn't get it for whatever reason. They didn't get her concept of rollout. They didn't get like, why would you want 150 
flavors of bread pudding, whatever it was. They didn't get it. And she was looking for investment so that she didn't just have this one little shack in Venice, right? The little, little tiny, like, 150 square feet that she was working out of. And the show aired. And I said to her after she came off uh, taping, I grabbed her really quick and said, look, just make sure your website's up and running. Make sure you're ready to go. Make sure you have all your ducks in a row Mm -hmm. before the show airs because you have no idea what's going to happen. And she ended up getting an investor who saw the show and said, oh, my gosh, I totally get it. (laughs) And now she's got four stores, um, one in Denver, one in San Francisco. I'm trying to think more than maybe San Diego. Um, but yeah, and she's her, her company like just blew up overnight. And that happens with a lot of companies. I mean, I think, you know, that's one of the things that we try to remind entrepreneurs about when they come on the show Not is make sure you have your actual show. Yeah, yeah the, exposure. In the, expo- yeah. the exposure. And, and mm-hmm. I think what you said was perfect about that idea of like, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready yeah. for this? You are you in a spot where you're prepared to scale? Do you know right. what scaling means? Right. Like you even you know in being able to kind of uh, you know take it to the next level. I'd be so curious to see um, how because a lot most people never had access to watching a pitch process. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. most people all over the country, unless they were in those meetings. They didn't see. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing now. I mean, now you've got so many entrepreneurs all over the country that have had all this access to see these types of things. I'd be curious to see how the pitching process mm-hmm. has started to change or shift or gotten better. A lot. Um, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. And a lot of that's attributed to also to the huge producing team that we have. Like the producers really work it's with the industry. entrepreneurs. Yeah. Shark Tank is an industry within itself. It's it's, it's, an it's a microcosm industry. of the American yep. dream, I think. Yeah. yeah and it's know. brought spinoffs and mm-hmm. all types of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's really yeah. it's, the, the work you guys have done is really impressive. So well, that leads me. I want to ask you one question then. What is the we're going to do our photo spire. What is the most inspiring photo you've snapped in the last 30 days? Oh, wow. Most inspiring photo I've snapped. Um, oh, is it horrible if I say probably my dog? I love <laughs> <your> dog. <laughs> yes. I answer what you have had. Yes. 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 Of course I, it's the dog. I, That's like the right yeah, answer. When I can catch my dog with a smile on his face... That, you know, true love, true love. I, I always say, you know, there's it's no there's no accident that God is dog spelled backwards, because when my dog comes to the door at the end, you know, when I come in at the end of the day, he's never disappointed in me. He's always happy to see me. He's always filled with joy, unconditional you know, unconditional love. love. What's dog's name? Teddy bear. You're an absolute powerhouse. Thank you so much. I love for you. Being thank with you. Us. Thank I love thank you, you too. And to all the businesses that you've helped front and center. Thank you. Hashtag your favorite photo spire inspiration pick of the week to us at frontandcenterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube at TV Guestbert and TV Guestbert Broadcast Podcast. Next up, Front and Center conversation with former William Morris agent Krista Parkinson, who is now the CEO of My Grads Get Jobs. People always want to talk about, well, what celebrities did you work with when you're an agent and all of that? What, what's the dirt? What's the dirt? Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned, and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, fight his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Detail's Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. Welcome back to Front and Center with Jackie Jordan. And everybody throws the relationships around now saying, oh, it's so easy. You just do a Facebook request or you get LinkedIn with on LinkedIn or, or whatever it is. Just because you follow somebody on social media is not networking. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Jackie Jordan here with show producer Stephanie Cobian and friend and author and wrote the forward to our new book, The Ultimate On-Camera Guidebook for Hosts experts and influencers with my co-author Shannon O'Dowd, reality television producer and author in his own right, Philip Andrew, and our dear friend Krista Parkinson, our guest today, Krista, William Morris agent, former William Morris agent, and now the CEO of My Grads Get Jobs. One of your bigger deals was, um, or work that you did with talent and employment like you did was with Mark Cuban. We had Margot Romero recently on our show from Shark Tank who did casting and obviously he's one of the sharks. 
So you must have a, a good story on that. Well, he that. was one of the investors of an entertainment finance company that I worked for. And so I was there doing business development and marketing. And I, my colleague and I had a really good idea as part of a marketing plan to get him on the show Entourage. And so even a billionaire needs help. Yes. And Margo, if you're listening right now, you can even tell him that I said this, but it's true. I remember Mark when he was transitioning. Ask. I mean, Mark I watched can, that transition Mark happen. can do the ask, but yeah. it was important for our company because ours was a no-name company and we wanted to build on his brand. So that appearance, and again, he was on screen for a couple of minutes on Entourage, but that one appearance took an entire year to massage nobody else is going to stick to it like that. That's a relationship. It's Mm -hmm. a relationship. So I would check in with the EPs of the show. I would follow up. I went, you know, you build the relationships over the course of time. And then it happened. It was awesome. He gets on the HBO show where he says on camera, you know, I'm not here to talk about that. All right, let's talk about content partners, which was the name of the company. You can't pay for that kind of mm-hmm. advertising. Um, so that w- I was something I was really pleased with at the company because Mark was happy. Our, you know, the company bosses were happy. And every time we went into a meeting, like, oh, hey, did I see Mark to, on Entourage? I'm like, yes, you did. You did. So it helped. Your other big deal, Krista, was Ryan Seacrest. People always want to talk about, well, what celebrities did you work with when you're an agent and all of that? What, what's the dirt? What's the dirt? Well, you're never going to hear anything negative from me. You're always going to hear the positive about maybe some little known things that celebrities do that are pretty darn awesome. And Ryan Seacrest is one of those guys. What I like about the Ryan Seacrest story, especially for the work of what I do at TV Guestbert, is that he wasn't an overnight sensation, an overnight success. Like he is a hard working and he's been around for a long time. And a lot of people, at least in the work that we do, often expect or have the expectation of like instant results, instant fame, instant success. And yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I met him many, many years ago when he came over to be a potential client at the agency. So I was one of a few agents in the room when we met him and he was had a radio show probably here, I think, maybe even in this studio um, in the afternoon. And he was just amazing. And he kept saying yes to absolutely everything. He had the energy and the stamina to go, 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 go. And, you know, we ended up signing him. And one of the things that we said to him was stop you need to start saying no to things because you're taking on so many responsibilities. If you don't start saying no, you're not going to have room for other things in your schedule to do. So and Stephanie and I have a sidebar conversation on that because we were always telling our po- folks to say yes. Say to- yes. Well, yeah, you say yes to everything until you hit a certain level. You got that. And then once you hit that level, then you need to be very judicious about what you say no to. Because I'll tell you, Jackie, I do the same with my students. You know, my company's called My Grads Get Jobs. And the whole point is to help juniors, seniors, and recent college graduates get their first jobs and internships in entertainment. And so a lot of times I'll hear students say, oh, well, I don't want to be pigeonholed. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you are 19 right? years old. I am you 19. Sound like I gotta, gotta get this thing right, right? Right now. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure for these kids yeah, and they feel like they've got, you know, that what they do now is going to dictate their entire career, which, you know, it is important what first job you get, but, uh, well, it's also, hold. you know, I think sometimes you see, you see kids that if they're not a millionaire by 21, they think they're a failure. A hundred percent. You know, because of they, what they see and well, they and grew they up with pressure. Mark Zuckerberg. Exactly. Exactly. You know, they think, where's my idea in college? On demand, instant gr- gratification. Yeah. Yeah. You, you order it on your cell phone and Amazon delivers it by tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Would you ever do what, would I tell your grads to do what Phil did at the top of the show, go to door to door? I know. When I heard Phil saying, you know, I didn't know anybody, I was like, all you needed to know was me. Oh, I know. <laughs> because oh, I where were you at? Exactly. You I, I was well, you still slaving to be away. just hanging out in Jackie's office waiting for me to come in. <laughs> no, but I loved your tenacity. We were talking off show about the idea that if you do the footwork and take the action, the results follow. You know, you had the student go after Aaron Sorkin, um, and then it creates a coincidence and then a synchronicity. One of the things that that just jumps out to me in this is also just the importance in, like, the power in proximity. Like, how important it is to be able to be in rooms with people or actually be able to meet people and putting yourself in a place where... You know, I mean, like, you know, everyone always told me when I got, it was like 50% of the battle is just getting to Los Angeles. You know, for me being a kid that I went to Michigan State, I wanted to work. It was like, I don't know what to do. It's like, well, step number one, get to California, you know? And it was like, then you have, like, I can't walk into Jackie's office and meet Jackie from Detroit. So 
I always tell students, your number one goal in a job interview or when you're approaching somebody is to be adorable. And it's having that energy. Mm -hmm. I would that what you did with Jackie was adorable. You just show up, hey, I'm here, you know. And now he's ultra successful. What's going on here? I don't take credit for him, I just, he is. (laughs) But it's your personality. And people don't care about your skills in the beginning. They care about your personality. I always say I I can teach skills, I can't teach instinct yeah in, yep. in in just the desire to want to learn and to want to soak up as much as possible in like you know i have uh, i i do i'll do talking with with kids that are in high school or college kids and that's always one of the things it's like look we know you don't know anything we know you don't know anything it's okay like you don't have to be the president of your last name production company and exactly. like we're not gonna like we get it we you're 19 you're 20 you're 21 and we we know that you don't know anything, but are you willing to do the little stuff, the work, yeah. how energetic? Yeah. Are you at hour 19, or I shouldn't say hour 19, but on hour 12 on set, are you still smiling? Or are you in the corner hoping that no one sees you and you're sneaking away so you don't have to do a job? And it's like, and that's what, that's what is such a difference. But I, I love what you say. Yeah, I don't care if you're president of your last name production company on your resume. I see all these elaborate productions. I'm like, get rid of it. All uh-huh. you need on your resume is I need you to work for the highest level place that you possibly can doing menial work. I want to see that you work at NBC. I'd like to see that you work at iHeartRadio. I'd like to see you work on The Ellen Show. Something like that. I don't care what you did at those places. People are just interested in the company you work for. For the rest of my life. I will always be referred to as a former William Morris agent. Always. Because it's I call it the obituary cool. moniker. I yeah, call it the it obituary is. moniker. What I've known about you, Krista, is in the many years that I have known you is that you were a really great deal maker. And when I would visit you or take meetings at William Morris, I always found you to be the only woman in the conference room at William Morris. And True. I always found that both... Well, it's, it means you did something right. Susie Unger and I, I think we're the yes. only two women. It's yeah, the only two women, yeah. Exactly. And both of you have also both left to do your own yeah. um, ventures at the at the time. So you did something right. You were one of the few women in the boardroom at William Morris. You went on to be senior vice president of business development. And then yeah. you started, that's when you started your own company. Well, I actually started this company way back when, right after I left William Morris. And I called it First Step Media. And the internet wasn't what it was now. We didn't have social media. We didn't have any of that stuff. And I ended up working for Tony Hawk at that same time. I was vice president of his uh, production company. And the best part about Tony Hawk and his sister, Pat, who runs the company, is, you know, they said, hey, we're entrepreneurs too. too." So why don't you work for us on Tuesdays and build your business? So I got to see firsthand how businesses grow, especially ones where, you know, the business is Tony Hawk. And at that time, I think he was a half a billion dollar a year business, right. employed all, you know, wonderful people. And uh, so I was able to do that way back then. What is the tie in between what you did as an agent to what you do now and how you translate that going forward? Well, you know, one of the things that uh, is key when you're an agent is about relationship building and network building. And everybody throws the relationships around now saying, oh, it's so easy. You just do a Facebook request or you get LinkedIn with on LinkedIn or, or whatever it is. Just because you follow somebody on social media is not networking. Mm-hmm. That is the point that gets you to be in contact, but it's what you do with that that is the point of uh, networking and relationship building. So that's one of the big things that I teach my students is how do you approach somebody? Um, you know, they say, oh, we'll just invite somebody out for coffee. I'm like, no, no, no. But who are you? Like, why is somebody big and fancy going to take coffee with you? Um, so we really have to talk about how to build those relationships. And one of the things I say um, is it starts with a vision of the kind of career you want. That's what I learned from the agency. You know, it's not good enough for you just to advocate for yourself, particularly as women. We have a really hard time doing it, but we can do it for somebody else. So good at doing I can, it for other people. I can tell you. I, I think can, we call it the wingman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Is I can't brag about myself, but I can get <laughs> but my I buddies ha- to brag about exactly. me. Exactly, and it has to come from a very authentic place. So tell me real quickly, how does being a William Morris agent tie into what you're doing right now? The best way possible. Because all a talent agency is, I mean, any of the big ones, it is roughest form. It's an employment agency for creative people. That's it. So my job as an agent was to help people get jobs. Well, I do the same thing for 20 somethings now. So I help them get jobs. It's the same skill set. You know, you wanna make sure you're presenting in the right way. You wanna make sure your tools are sharp. You wanna make sure the resume is amazing. 
I encourage all of my grads to do a video cover letter. So in one minute, you wrap up your, you tell your story. Even if you never use the video cover That's letter, so good. when you it's actually so apply, out of my world, like, well, because, so like you know, I just don't come from that world. Of well, because writing. the reason why you do it is, you know, what's the first question anybody asks you in a job interview? So tell me about yourself. Exactly. And they say, duh, duh, I don't know what to say. What do you want to know? Blah, 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 blah. We don't want that. We want you to be sharp and have a presentation and be ready to roll with it. So some people love getting the videos because it shows that's somebody who's going to give me some effort. That's the person you want on your production because they're going to go the extra mile. But it also helps the person know what their story is and mm -hmm. what the most important point um, points to bring out. So I just, I have my photo spire for you. Yes. What is the most inspiring photo you've snapped in the last 30 days? Well, it happens to be, uh, this is an easy question. Uh, it happens to be, I was recently on safari with, for my friend's 40th birthday. And it's a picture of a lioness. And we happen to be very, very close to this lioness. And I mean, it was so close to the car, so I kind of photobombed the lioness. Oh so God. I'm right oh, there. The great. lioness is in the background. Yeah, I would say that one. That's I like it because that trip uh, was really inspiring. You know, I do a whole lecture. I'm actually going to Dartmouth uh, University and doing a big presentation for them. And the big thing is, you know, we talk about Hollywood as being, you know, we're all just animals in this ecosystem. And some animals live in the wild and some animals live in the zoo. And, you know, the animals in the wild are your artists, your writers, directors directors, producers who are going to go hustle job to job to job. And your animals in the zoo are your agents, your managers, your studio executives. They have a paycheck. It doesn't matter what they do. I mean, they just have to perform at a certain level, but artists have to perform at a way higher level to be successful. And so this trip in the safari, even though I had this lecture already in my um, practice, I'm bringing it to Dartmouth in a whole new way this fall, because now I have um, experience in the in the wild and learning a little bit more about these animals and how it applies to the 20 something job seeker is amazing. I mean, we'll have to talk about I that another that. time because yeah. that I'm really excited about the uh, speaking tour. Thank you so much, Krista, for being here. My grads get jobs. I so appreciate you. And I so appreciate everybody who uh, has participated and listened in. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Stephanie, for joining us front and center. And you can find us at TV Guestbird on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us on the Front and Center with Jackie Jordan podcast. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Instagram at TV Guestbert. We'd love to hear from you.